would have been the second best highlight from the weekend. The whole weekend? Yeah, the whole weekend. The comeback oh, on Friday. Comeback. I mean, yeah. the comeback was pretty amazing. And uh, Earwax I didn't, was pouring out of my ears. I didn't think they were going to win, necessarily. You know, they might. But I did think it would be a last-second deal. I yeah. was kind of disappointed. that Kind of fizzled. Yeah, it fizzled. It That's fizzle. a good word. It fizzled, and you didn't... You know, put the pressure on you know Mello mm. or or whoever on any on any Nick. Put the pressure on them to run a play to make a basket in the final you know twenty seconds. That would have been something else. It was it was an amazing comeback with with no symmetry to it at all. No. Just the chaos, just chaos, it just came out of nowhere. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I mean, you just you just felt it was over, and then all of a sudden you got a couple of baskets, and out all, all of a sudden, a couple more, and then all of a sudden you thought. Avery Bradley, who couldn't get out of his own way, is stealing balls left right. and right dunking it. and dunking it and going, and you're saying, Avery, you, you don't look hurt anymore. Where was this guy? Yeah. Now, did you think when you were watching this unfold that it was the Knicks choking or the Celtics resting control of that basketball game away from them? I know it's a mm. little bit of both. I feel uh, it's the Knicks choking. Usually, you know, that's how it works. The, you know, if they just score you know, an occasional basket. And they did at the end. But it was a 20-0 run? Yeah. 20 to nothing. Down twenty. Just throw a basket in there. Yeah. It's twenty to two or twenty to four. It's it's a different deal. You know, I think it was the Knicks choking. And I don't think I mean it, the Celtics didn't do anything extraordinary. I mean, you had layups, you had some dunks, you had some free throws, free you had throws. Terry. Uh how, how many threes were in that twenty oh run? Um I mean two one we can get the box. I mean Pierce had that crazy shot where you got you know, then you threw it up and yeah. right in front of the basket. Yeah, the yeah, he made. It was like a layup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Layup. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, I think it was the Knicks choking, which you kind of thought they would if you put the pressure on them. I mean, it was an incredibly disappointing performance from the Celtics until they won on the little run, and then it was just disappointing knowing that this is how it ends. You didn't quite finish the job, didn't quite complete the comeback. Well, the game was a microcosm of the series. In both the series and the game, the Celtics let them run out to a big lead, and then they had to chip away, and Mm -hmm. they failed to win the series, and they certainly failed to win the game. Um, I, I, I will be interested to know, and we can start this today. In fact, I heard some of it over the weekend with Craig and Larry and some other people. But I want to know, will there be anybody call this radio station or opine that the smart thing for Danny Ainge to do would be to, and here's that quote, take one more shot at it with this core group of people. Will there be a logical, symmetrical, convincing argument that the smart thing for Danny to do would be what Red did back in the day that Danny criticized and stay too long at the dance with the old guys. Sure, because Red turned down some good deals. You know, Red turned down Chuck Person for Larry Bird. He turned down Detlef Shrimp uh, and, and uh, Sam, Sam Perkins. Perkins for Kevin McHale. Uh, he turned down a chance to, to get younger and get better. You're not going to have a, a lot of chances uh, with these guys. Well, he had a chance at the uh, trading deadline back in February for the Clippers trade. Mm-hmm. Now, they will tell you that it really wasn't there to be had. Right. But it seems to me, based on all the reports and all the talk and all the information out there, that it was at least on the table. Whatever they wouldn't do to sweeten it, whatever they wouldn't do to make the Clippers happy, I don't know. But I don't think they're going to get that kind of value well, I don't think... try to trade these guys. Do we know Garnett? Garnett, Garnett didn't sign off right. on it. That's I mean, the I thing. Think, I think you have that obstacle as well. And Garnett says he's not, well, he didn't say flat out, but uh, he said Pierce's decision will affect his. Mm. Um, so you still have that no trade clause. And I heard somebody, it might have been to Craig and Larry, no, Dale and uh, and Brad Foe, and the guy's railing, why did you give him a, a no trade? You had to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had to. It's not like, uh, you know, Danny just said, you know, Kev, Kev, I really like having you around. How about a no trade? Yeah. You know, it was part of the deal. Garnett wanted it. Garnett negotiated for it, and he got it. Uh, at, at the time, you didn't – you know how long it's been since we thought Garnett was, was ready to hang it up? Uh, three like and three and a half years? years? Yeah. <laughs> at least. Right. I mean, it and it may happen, but, hey, he's a good player. He's a real good player at 30, almost 37. I'll say this. I, I always I always like trades, and I like rebuilding, and I trust Danny Ainge, so I'm all for uh, for for making drastic Blowing changes. Blowing it up. Blowing it up. Yep. I, I know we don't like that expression, but uh, I'm all for But the team of Garnett, Pierce, Green. Ray Allen. No, the oh, team you, of Garnett, Pierce, now. Green, uh, Rondo, Sollinger, Rondo, is better than the team that you will see That's on the true. floor uh, in October if they do blow it up. For more, visit weei.com slash video.